In this video, we're going over all of my holdbacks from last year and late 2022. And I'm starting with none other than my favorite holdback of all time. This is a Deadpool line and Pennywise offspring. We actually came up with a name now. The whole story is behind it. It's, it's pretty funny. It's on our Instagram. But basically, I asked all of you what we should name this guy. Somebody said tampon. I didn't want to name him tampon. The next best thing was Tampax and that name caught on fire. Everybody loved it. Everybody thinks it's hilarious. So that's what he's going to be named. He is honestly one of the craziest gargoyle geckos I've ever seen and definitely the craziest one I've seen in person. You could see all that red that's starting to go up in front of his face his eyebrows, the dorsal is starting to fill up really nicely. And this gecko is just absolutely insane. Definitely my favorite gecko I've ever produced. And now I'm going to show you some of the crested geckos that are holdbacks that will be breeding hopefully next year. Now this next gecko is from a pair that I absolutely love that's produced some bangers. This is from Crypto and Blood Orchid. As you can see, this is a red tricolor extreme harlequin lily white what i love about the tricolor lily whites is that they start to get a little bit of that fading of the lily white pattern and that yellow head when you mix the tricolor with the lily white obviously aside from that you could see some of the the red base in the bottom then you see some of the yellow orange spots and then the white from the lily white it's just such a great mix of colors and this is a male so i'm super happy with that because Everything about this gecko is like on point. The structure is great. He has a big wide head. He has great color. He has great pattern. He has the genetics to back it up. I mean, how could you just not love a gecko like this? I absolutely love this animal and I can't wait to put this guy to good use next year and actually start breeding him. So this next gecko right here is a female and honestly, she might very well go with that last male I just showed you. This is a red extreme harlequin, but she actually has tangerine influence on her cream, on her markings, and her red color is a hypo red base. That just means that it basically eliminates a lot of the dark pigment and makes a, a lot brighter orange and red down on the base color and it just goes so well with this gecko. It's very busy with pattern. It's not something that I will ever, ever get bored of because I could just look at this thing all day. A very, very beautiful gecko produced in-house here also. And I just love the amount of like busyness the Harlequin markings are doing on the side right there. Gorgeous gecko, extreme Harlequin, red pinstripe, hypo, so much going on here. And I can't wait to produce babies out of this girl eventually. This is a tricolor quad stripe white wall and I have a very soft spot in my heart for white walls. I absolutely love them. But this boy right here comes from amazing lineage. We produce them in house also. All the geckos that we're showing here are pretty much produced in house. But his structure is perfect. The, the color is uh, sensational and just like this is the cornerstone type male that I need for some of my other projects. I absolutely love this gecko. Sometimes they, uh, they don't love me back. You could see why I just love this gecko. In my, in my opinion, this is like a 10 out of 10 gecko. Everything on this gecko is on point. The pattern, the color, the structure. Um, he's a male, so that's always good because I get to breed him to a couple different females. And yeah, doesn't get much better than this. Now this gecko right here took me a long time to produce. This, of course, is an azanthic lily white. And the only thing that gets better than this is just more white on this animal, basically. But the Azantic Lily Whites are special because you get that crazy contrast that you don't see with any other gecko. When you get the Azantic mixed with the Lily White, for whatever reason, the white just pops more. Well, it's not for whatever reason. It's because Azantics, you know, kind of strip away the red and the yellow. And you could see that happening right there on his laterals and his tail. It's just paper white. Such a beautiful little gecko. Took me forever to produce. Now that I did get to pop some of these out, they're gonna definitely be staying here for a long time. Now this beefy boy right here is a culmination of so many of my different lines. We got Omega on here, we got uh, Tiramisu, we got Pina Colada, one of my OG yellow and cream geckos. 
And look at this boy, he's just amazing. He has great white walls, great pinstripes, a great head structure. Everything on this gecko is just beautiful. Even the base color is very unique because it's a yellow, it's like a dirty yellow. Not a hypo, obviously, but it, it gives it a, a different touch, especially on the undertones of those pinstripes. You can see what we used to call reverse pinstriping right on the borders of that white wall. I love this gecko. Yellows don't get enough credit. They definitely need more love out here. And uh, this is a prime example of the potential that they have. Now this creamsicle lily white comes from my group Rillo and Rillo is a stud of a gecko. He produces some amazing lily whites. But look at this girl here. She has so much coverage. The base color is just super bright and yellow. But I wanted to show you that chin right here. Look at this. She has like some of that white spilling over on her chin and I think that's the coolest thing ever. I don't see that too often on lily whites and hopefully you get a good shot of it there but it's, uh, she's such a beautiful, beautiful lizard. As far as pattern and color, this is like top grade. Her head structure could be a little bit better, but that's not an issue. We'll fix that in the next generation. This gecko is a stunning animal. Now this gecko right here is a super empty back crested gecko, and it has a, pr a great amount of contrast. The, the super, the empty bag gene will obviously kind of like erase all the dorsal pattern that you see right there. It will also take away some of that pattern from the head and from the sides and the limbs. So it creates a very unique looking gecko and the empty bags, they've picked up so much steam in the last couple months. So I had to show one of these off. This is one of the holdbacks that I have from my empty bag project this year. And I think he is an absolute stunner. Stunner. I love when the empty bags have that really, really dark base color. Okay, so these two next geckos I'm going to show you, we didn't produce here, but they're so beautiful, I have to show you them. This one comes from Draken Geckos. Hope I'm not mispronouncing that, but this female has so much white pattern. It's obviously an extreme Harlequin. She has a very light base, but the amount of white and cream that she has is just insane. I cannot wait to start to add this to all of my other projects. Maybe a sable down the line would make some really dope geckos. And you could see like this girl has great structure, pattern, color. The only thing I would change it on her when I start breeding them is I want to get them with a little bit darker base color to make sure that that contrast is higher up there. But as far as the white pattern, it doesn't get any much better than this. This girl is amazing. Some people might mind the spots on her. She has a couple. I personally don't care. I actually like the spots because it almost looks like cookies and cream. This is a very, very beautiful gecko. I love this girl right here. Now I'm going to show you another gecko that I picked up from my friend Gabby at Morph Menagerie. And this is a, a pairing that is like a legendary because of I mean, there, it's a new pairing that they did. She actually did a, a, a breeder collab with, with another breeder that has some beautiful geckos, some really, really nice white geckos as well. But this is from KGB and War Room. You could see that this is still such a small gecko, definitely under 10 grams. And the white walling and the drip that is going to be coming from this gecko is absolutely insane. So it's something that I had to get to add into all of my projects and make my blood that much better. That is something that I can't stress enough. A lot of breeders, especially like the bigger breeders, they start to get comfortable and they don't want to add any new blood into their projects. But I think it's always important to keep adding new blood and especially when it looks like this two of my favorite holdback geckos here that weren't produced by me. Now these two geckos are two holdbacks, one from Pennywise right here and the other one from Dracula Jr. And they love to pee on me when I have them out. But you could see that the red stripes are definitely progressing year after year. They're getting better and better. And these are two juveniles, so they still have so much more to develop. The coverage on these animals is insane. This one might have a solid dorsal by the end of the development. And this one here, I mean, the, the, the lateral stripes and, and the, the quality of the red is just out of this world. 
These are animals that are priceless to me. I've worked so many years to try to produce things like this. And now I can't wait to see in the next two, three, four, five years what we're gonna make. If this is what we're producing now, I can't even imagine what the future holds. So excited about these geckos right now. And uh, yeah, guys, doesn't get much better than this. Now, this is the first time I ever show this gecko on YouTube. This is a Deadpool Junior offspring, and it's probably my second favorite gargoyle I've ever produced because of all that red splatter that you see on the body and on the head. Just an amazing gecko. This is definitely one of my favorite up and coming breeders. I can't wait till she actually, uh, I can't wait till she actually is of breeding size and her red is still gonna be picking up. And the funny thing about this story is that when I first got this gecko, when I first hatched it, I thought I was a little underwhelmed because I expected so much more from Deadpool Jr. This is one of those geckos that as it started to age, more and more red came about. A barren type pattern that it has, the, the splattering of the red is what I really like. It's not in a neat line. It's kind of like all over the place. So I love this gecko, top tier gargle gecko, definitely from us right now. All right guys, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed the little sneak peek of the future of Tiki's geckos. We are so excited to be producing some of the best geckos we possibly can and we want to show you guys obviously if you want to support the channel please subscribe we're almost to 100k and if you want to get some of this merch this is the original crested gecko shirt from back in the day we still have some of these on the website we have the gargle gecko shirt and three new t-shirts go check that out thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one